Hey crafty friends, welcome back to the old paper lady. If you're new here, thank you for joining. I hope you stick around. Uh, we're going to continue working on the, our second wildflower journal. I've been uh, getting ephemera bits and tags and pockets and such done this week. Let me go this down just a little bit because I'm going to spread my papers out up here. And then we're going to flip through our actual journal pages with the color pages and uh, see where they fit in the best and what color we want. So I've got two that was folded up from our last journal that we didn't uh, use in there. So I'm just gonna lay the colors out here and turn, flip our papers over and see where we think they're gonna uh, line up at the best. And if we don't use them, we don't use them. We'll just put them back in the stack and let it, let it go. And these are blues, but they're different shades of blue. And this is a little bit darker than that. So, we're just going to line them up here. See what colors we think are going to look better wherever. And I'm going to do that by looking at the flower colors on the page. And overall colors. And this is the different shades of purple that we got. And these are wanting to slip slide away on me. So I even pulled out some red because there are red flowers and there's a bright, bright orange and a burnt orange. And then that purple is different from those. So I'm gonna line them up there like that. And then I'm gonna take and just flip the pages over and see what color would go better. I really need to pick a front page, honestly. Let's see, I will, I've got a page that's fixed for this. And I think that pink peach would go really good with that. I was thinking the orange, like this orange would because of the, but that either one of them would go great with that. So here is going to be the inside of our cover. And it, let's see. Oh, that's pretty. You can see it has the different color blues and uh, purples in it. Can you see where I'm at here? Yeah. Okay. I do like this wider, wider filming. So then I can kind of spread out like this. You know, it's a little hard to spread out the colors in that. And see, that would be pretty with the with blue or purple or yellow. And I would probably do yellow here because it's more yellow in the back. But what I'm wanting to do right now is, uh, I don't reckon it really matters much. All the, that's real pretty. That's got a lot of flowers on it. And that one's real pretty. Let's see what we think here. I think I'm going to put that there on the front. And that'll be on the back. So if it's got, you know, a, a whole floral scene. These two pages here do. I like that one there. Because we got purples and that's a good mix of all the colors throughout the journal. So then that way. And I hadn't picked a middle for this one to be honest with you. I really hadn't. So I think what I'm going to do is I will may do a uh, some whole page pockets or actually I think we'll do this we'll do this piece that we made and this is it decorated up I put some butterflies on it so I think we'll do this here for the middle I think that'll be pretty I really do all right so that's going to be the middle of the signature this will be the front I still got some tags that I uh that I glued to uh, just some cream cardstock, eight, uh, 65 pound. I gotta cut those out and get those done today. That'll probably be my next video. And then we'll have all the parts together. All right, so that's gonna be the middle. I'm just gonna lay it flat. And then we'll go from there. All right, so we'll put that in the middle. And then this will be our front. Let's flip that over this way. I'm going to take this and put it over here to the side. And then we'll just go from there. 
and we'll see what colors we want. All right, so it won't be so busy, body. I'm gonna put the, the rest of the papers here on the side to my cutter, and we'll just look at one paper at a time. So see, really, this peach would go good here, and this orange would go good there. It's a real dark and real bright orange. Now, do we want to go dark jewel tones? Because there's jewel tones in this. If we did that, it would be more kind of a faller, a fallier, or more fall wildflower intended. Yeah, I think if we did the dark, the dark jewel tones. Let me see. I don't know. I like that orange there with that. I, I just do. But that peach is calling it. We got some other papers in there. Let's, let's just do this. All right. Since we did, you know, light colors in the other one. I don't know. That's not going to go with the cover in it. Let's look and see what the cover is. I want overall matchiness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, all right. I think we'll save that for a fall. I mean, it'll match and go, but it's a little, it's a little much. I think we're going to do this peach here. In between these papers so it'll that you'll turn the page and that'll be up against that and then it'll be up against this on the back side I think that would go better so we're gonna do the peach on there flip this and over out of our way here's the next one all oh, that pink looks pretty with that yeah I think I like the pink the pink with this and see, and it had reds in it. So this could go for spring or fall because of the dark jewel tones in it. And it's so pretty. All right, so I think we'll do the pink on this. What do you guys think? That's going to be like it'll flip to this. Yeah, I think that'll go. So we'll put that. Because I want springier colors. Does that make sense? Oh, look at these blues. See, it's got the dark jewel tones, though. You know what I'm saying? See, look at that. Hmm. I like that one. Because it goes, you know, that was a little... But that would match perfect. But it's the dark jewel tone. And I don't want... I don't want to go dark. I want to stay light and airy, springy. So let's do, see what this matches here. I think that would be pretty. Whoops. And that's a little thicker cardstock. Yeah. That would be pretty there. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I may, may switch it around a little bit. And I'll see, look, this here. This overall, I see the purpley. Uh, that blue stands out right off the bat, but the purple colors is what I'm looking at here. So I'm going to take this and see in this purple hue, purplish pink hue. And I'm turning it upside down so I can get a better close match of the purple. Let's pull these purples out. That's pretty. That's a little dark, I think. This is kind of more of a bluish purple, which kind of goes a little better, I think. Yeah. See, it's, uh, what is that? Um, uh, periwinkle. And see, and then you have this, which is a, a different shade of purple. Yeah, I like this bluish purple here. That matches there. Okie doke. So we're going to put that one there. All right, so now this, I want a blue. Or we can do this. Because see this here. Well, let's pull the blue. Let's 
seen. And again, that's that darker tone. So I may do a, a version of this for the fall with these jewel tone colors. You could go either way. Yeah, see that matches really good. But it's dark, you know. And it's a little bit too light. Oh, let me see this here. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. And this, that would go good with that. Now I'm wanting to see if I've got another. So we got some more purpley bits and light orange and yellow bits. Uh oh, Snoop's upset now. Something, something. I must have hit something. Yeah, I think that that blue there will go with that. Oh, bless him. Oh, all righty, Snoop Dogg. So I'm thinking I want this purple here. I think that's going to go there. Oh, Snoop. Something must be in a yard he don't like. Let's get back to this page here. So I like that dark blue, but I think I'm going to go with this one. I don't know. This right here, though, matches that. Let's do the tilly one. Do the tilly one with these. But now, this right here, let's look at this one. Now I got all my colors mixed up. All right, let's look at this one. You know, I'm sorry my dog's raising sand in the background. Let's well, see, that looks pretty, too. But I like this teal color here. I like that that matches, and it's going to bring that forward, I think. All right, let's quit debating over it. Put that over out of the way. Okay, so now let's lay our colors back out. I want this purple on this page just because it's purpley. I know it's a little darker. But I think that would go really good with that on either side. Okay. I knew there it is. So this one will go with this. We're going to do that with that one. I was thinking about that or the yellow one, either one. I like that. And this one here, what do we want? I think I'm going to pull that yellow in there. I think that would be pretty. Yep. All right. That's it. That's our pages. We'll put all these back, and these will be for, uh, will that blue look good on that page? Let's take a look. Nah, it does, but it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? It looks, these are more of a purpley blue. Does that make sense? Periwinkle color, not a blue blue. Yeah, okay. Yellow it is. Put the back. All right, so then now we need to pick one. To go with this and I think I'm just gonna do the light little light blue or we could do the green seeing how it's already folded it's one less step for us you know don't have to worry about folding it and let's see how if I can pick it up okay so it's gonna come off of this and it'll go to that This, this, and this. Now let's flip over this way, and it's going to be edged in green. 
I actually think I like that. I don't know. Let me see with the blue. I'm gonna go with this lighter blue because see it has the blues and stuff and the butterflies and the flowers there. That's gonna be the back of it. That looks pretty. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's do the blue on that. I'm gonna put that in the middle. Yep. Yeah. All right. So then now all we gotta do is fold our papers up and keep them in order. Where's our cover? I'm going to pull my uh, school board over here just because I pushed the papers up against it. And it makes it easier for me to fold that way. Let's see this piece will flip over and it's got a butt, a blunt end to stick. Or, so when you go to score, you stick your paper up against it. So I've just taken my papers Push it up against the end of it. I do a light, a light score on it at first. Yep, and I think that's gonna work, y'all. And then, like I said, I'm gonna leave the back, the back of the the kit papers white. And we'll decorate it with our our pockets and decorated bits. And that's what we're going to do. Oh, that's going to be pretty. See, like the color kind of comes out the side. I like that. Alrighty. And like I said, these uh, solid papers were in a multi-pack that I had bought. And I couldn't tell you how long I've had it. I just have it in my uh, eight and a half <clears throat> by 11 colored paper box drawer whatever you want to have and then the, I just take if I want solid papers that you know that because this is a little thinner works great to go in between actually this is thinner than the paper that I, I printed my uh, printed my journal pages on my journal pages are on 40 pound paper and this is a, this is a little thinner than that So that it might even be white core paper that you get from the Hobby Lobby. So it wasn't uh, cardstock. So I just put it in my colored backgrounds. And then what I do is if I want colored paper to back something with, I pull this out. And then it works great to go in the journals as well. Let me get me a bone folder here. Like I said, this is a. And I'm trying not to scrape across that because it, it, it annoys me when I'm doing it by myself. So I know it's going to annoy you all on camera. Because it seems like you can't hear me talk, but every little racket, you can hear it magnified, it seems like. <laughs> but yeah, so this is what I'm doing. This is my Sunday evening, be y'all's Monday video. So I got my journal, uh tags and journal pockets we got our uh here's all the tags i got made up yesterday this is what you saw and then this is what i did after i was sitting waiting to put the video up cut apart made and you know glued and all that and then i've got all the journal card bits and look, I took that bicycle and made it into, a, it can be a journal card, or if I needed another pocket, I could use it as a pocket. And then there's ephemera uh, bits and such. And look, these are my cloth covers. 
I just put them on the back of them sticker papers that I used out of that. So I was like, that would be a journal card. And I was going to try to round the corners, but I got it on there without fraying. And I'm like, I'm leaving it alone. But I was like, if I need to, I can use this as a pocket as well. So, And I also made pockets with my fabric from the front. So I was like, yay. <laughs> so I'm thinking the journal cards, I'm going to stick in that, um, the middle piece, the music paper that we made, the double pockets in that. So, and that on the same sticker background. So I saved those bits for stuff like this. And then these are the pockets and such that you all uh, watched me put together, but I didn't actually uh, glue and do all of that on camera. These were the ones that you saw me do on camera yesterday. So I'm pretty sure we got us enough pockets and such. I had and I didn't do belly bands for this. And, uh, and I didn't do uh, a whole lot of side tuck or, or side page tucks. I hadn't done that for either one of these. So, cause, mainly because I wanted, you know, to, to use up my book page stuff and do full page pocket type things and just make big pretty tags to go in it. And then that way you have, you know, when you pull your tags out, of the pockets that are on the white pages, the majority of them you can still, like there's gonna be a pocket here and there'll be tags, but you can still write. So you know, you have uh, plenty of writing space. That's why I like, uh, you know, like I said, even though we are decorating the white pages, all of them, you're still gonna have writing space on the white page. Now this is, uh, maybe a 65 pound weight cardstock and it's an older paper and you buy those kits that have like the uh the spring colors yeah and it is it's a hobby lobby piece because see it cracked and it's white yeah and the white core but yeah so i think uh we're going to get this done today I may possibly, I don't know if I get my uh, signature sewn in because I didn't pull my stuff out to do that with on this video. But, you know, if I get these pages folded up, get them in there. And like I said, I still want to cut these tags apart. Get those done. I'm off work Wednesday. I actually only got to work two hours Wednesday. Sometime during the day out of my choice whenever I want to go up there for two hours. So, uh, I may wait till Wednesday to actually decorate it. But we're going to get all of our other pieces and stuff done in the meantime on video. So, we'll sew the journal together. And we'll start decorating placing our pockets. I put the tags in and try to get that done on Wednesday's video. Well, that one there don't want to it don't want to go up against there. It's a little thinner paper. And it's got a perforated edge here. So that's telling me that it came out of like one of those little notebook things. Way back in the day they used to have the uh, the notebooks where it had uh, it had a binding over here and it was all you know certain kinds of color paper or scrapbook paper and such and that was way back way way back early days of scrapbooking <laughs> times I don't do a real heavy uh, burnish on on my papers when I fold them but that's why I like having this cutting board like right here so when I set it down it's right here to my left hand so I have my cutter score sitting there all the time and then I got me a smaller one just for you know just a little quick you know like a little snippet things like this you know to do 
over here. And then I've noticed that it was sitting there with a ring light shining in y'all's face the other night. And I'm sorry about that. So I'll get this together. If I can pick it up. But I wanted to walk through and show you how, you know, I just go through and pick out the solid papers to go with stuff. And I think I'm going to try my best to start collecting on, like, <clears throat> it'll be white core uh, papers. And they are, they are a little thinner. But see, like this here, it feels like it's like a 20-pound paper to me. It's real thin. But the white core papers that they have at Hobby Lobby would be great for, you know, in journals and stuff like this. If you didn't want a, a grunged up journal. Now, don't get me wrong. I still have journals that I'm, I'm going to uh, see. And this is a white core. You could tell the edge. This, you can see that white core bit. But, yeah, I'm going to uh, I got get me some uh, coffee dyed and ink dyed papers. I'm looking for me a uh, just a music kit where it just has the notes. I don't want any words or anything like that. I just so then I can just print it off all the time once I go through my uh, get through my music that I've found at the uh, thrift stores. Oh yeah, that's gonna be pretty. So once I get through the music that I found at the thrift stores, trying to find me a good music page background where it just has notes on it. So then I can uh, print my music off whenever I feel like it and keep on using it. But then, you know, you can't make it the music page pockets and such like that. I mean, I'm still, if I'm at the thrift stores, you know, I'm still going to look for it. Don't get me wrong there. I still will be on the hunt for music paper in the thrift stores, but. Okay. I'm going to put that in there fairly even. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to work, y'all. I'm going to like that. And then, yep. Yep, that's going to be pretty. See, look. It opens up and you got the little, the, be the blue hue and that sticker bit there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to like that. All right. What time is it? Oh, it's only 20 minutes. Let's go get our uh, journal sewing kit. I'll be right back. We just gonna go on ahead and get it sewed in. I'm gonna put these over here because I gotta cut them. I'm gonna close up my uh, wildflower journal box and put it back up here in my cabinet because we are done with the wildflower bits for a little bit. How are you looking at them? <laughs> get the journal sewing kit out. This here's what I was doing earlier today. I was putting my beads that I got from the Hobby Lobby in their thing and labeled them up. So I, not really just, you know, for the color or whatever, just so I know which pack I had already gotten, basically. And then I went yesterday and I got all of these little pin post things. But I got all these little pin post things where I could make my dangles. And I made my first dangly bit today. Isn't that sweet? I just want them just, you know, to clip on the lace and just hang off the side of the journal. I think that'd be cute. I made that for Christmas. And then I uh, put it in the, the little color coordinated piece that it was... Uh, which one it was, whatever color it is, if I'm gonna make them. This one up here will be for all Christmas. And this is just whatever. <laughs> so, 
that's how I de that's how I decide what goes where is you know it's Christmas and then everything else basically and then I bought these bits this is that where you uh, put it put it through to make the little loop on it and it cuts it off for you a whole lot easier on your hands than sitting and fooling with this thing having around it yep so that's what I did this morning was getting that bits together I still got to put my pink cart together and then I'll have all of my beads and stuff on it on one section and then uh, I'm gonna take and put my brads and eyelets and all of that on the bottom on the other section of it so then that way you know it, whatever I'm working on and have one right here or one I got one like right here like literally like right here's the edge of my table my my cart is right here so i can have one here and one back here to right behind me and now i'll have all my stuff on it this one is sitting here now is my sewing cart and then my stamp cart i want to get i'm going to get it pulled over here after we get this uh journal done i got some uh, ideas for stamping I want to stamp on some, uh, stamp up some tissue paper to be like the faux, faux Tim Holtz uh, tissue paper that he had. I'm going to make some of that up and use that. And I still didn't pull out any of my, uh, any of my, uh, what am I trying to say, my vellum. For this journal and I've got a ton of it a ton of vellum that I've printed I didn't pull none of that out to work with this journal so that would have been really pretty in here to make some vellum pockets and I thought about doing that but I didn't do it yet because I was like well you know I get into that then I'm not gonna quit you know <laughs> I'll just make all the vellum pockets because I love vellum. And then we can stamp on vellum as well. Do some stuff with that. With that. So I want to play with my stamps for a few days. I'm thinking of at least a day. At least one, one, one day. Okay, what green do I want? It's pretty. There's a darker green in here that I'm saving up for Christmas. Y'all, I love this kit right here that I got. I got it off of Amazon. And I found it. I was searching for uh, searching for wax-covered yarn. And I come across this with all the colors. And I said, I've got to get me that. So I like this. But I like that one too. So I think I'm going to go with this one. I'm sorry about the crinkle, but I keep it in here so the wax is less out to be dried out. You see, that one goes good, and that one goes good as well. Yeah, I probably can't even see what I'm doing. So that's the colors that I'm choosing from. I think I'm going to go with this one. Because it matches overall everything. Just set this over here to the side because I'm going to get this sewed in. And then I think I'll call it a video. It's one, two, three, and a little bit. So I always do a little bit, which is like two or three inches just for the uh, making sure. I have enough, so if I want to put some dangles, beads on the end of it, or some type of, uh, some type of charm, I'll do that. Or if whoever I give it to, or later on sell it to, they can put their own beads or dangles on it if they wish. Just the 
straight it up. Alright, I'm going to lay that over to the side. I'm going to get my papers back out here. I'm going to get them shoved down in there real good. Make sure that they are all lined up. Put it in here where I want it. Make sure none is sticking out more than the other. They're all lined up good. Take my thumbs, poke it down in there. Oh, I should have opened these up before I done that. Well, it's gonna be a mess trying to get these open with one hand, especially the one where the fingers don't like to bend that good. <laughs> So then what I'm going to do, ow, I can't get it open. So I'm going to take where I got it pinched here and clip it. And then we'll flip it over to the other side. Poke it in with my thumb and hold it where I got my journal stuck up into the bend of the uh, cover. Clip it. I'm gonna flip it back over to this side. And the reason why I flip back and forth is so it, uh, when you clip it, it'll cause it to shift just a hair. But if you pinch your thumb right in the middle and push it to the, to the spine, it should stay in place. Especially if the paper is just a, a hair bit. Well, I can't get a hold of that. Oh. If the paper is just a hair bit shorter, oh, it's going to split the music paper. Don't do it to me. Oh, it did do it to me. And that's okay. We'll put us a piece of washi over it. That's the only bad thing about these with my hands where I can't get a hold of stuff that good is it'll split a, a thinner paper. And sometimes I'll have to take and hold it like that so I can get it angled in there just to get it where I can hold it so it don't split my paper. And then I'll move it out once I can get a better grip on it with my thumb. And it's poked straight up in there. See how tight that is up in there? And I'm not pushing on it. But yeah, so that's, that's real good and tight up against that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my all for book binding. And see, I have one that has a little hole in it for, uh, I'm just trying to deem wherever the middle is here, middle ways. Let me get my pokey mat first so I don't mess up this one. And you can have a, a book cradle. I just judge about middle ways in the book. And I poke it. And then I'll lay it down. And poke it on through. And this one here we may have to re-poke a few times because it's the thinner fabric but that fabric on the inside is a little thicker and it may close back up on us so I'm going to wiggle that just a little hair. I'm going to wiggle that around each time I poke it just so it'll help keep the memory of where we went through it. So then I'm going to go to the bottom end, go about an inch or so in and I'm going to poke that one. And do the same thing. We'll try to wiggle it just to make that hole a little fatter. So when I do try to go in and out, it'll hold it. I'm gonna go back up here to the top, about another inch down, and poke that. And I'll lay it down because it's easier for me to, to just push it through with my thumb. Yeah, you can get you a book cradle. They have them on Etsy. They have them on, uh, I think some some people have them on Amazon. And I also have this little uh, gadget here that I got from We Are Keepers. We Are Memory Keepers. 
and this piece will come off and you can uh, indicate like your uh, eight and a half journal your uh, five by sevens or whatever size and indicate the holes that you need to punch for that size journal and just make you a little template somewhere or you can uh, write it here with a sharpie or you can put it on there with you know a uh, label maker whatever you want to do and it'll uh, it'll poke your holes in your paper for you and then you can take this piece here and flip it over and it'll and it'll poke down the spine as well so that's that's what I use sometimes when my hands hurt really bad is I'll use that but it's time it's a little time consuming so you know like I said I hadn't really planned on uh, sewing this in right at the moment today I was going to just pick the papers and and all of that and then let you all go but since we're doing it up let's do it up then all we got to do is go back through and decorate it yeah see so soon so I put that up now I gotta put repoke that hole just through the spine part just because of that fabric closed up that's all that is and it'll do that from time to time depending on the thickness of your fabric it will close back up on you yeah I do. let me get this out so i don't stick myself with the needle <laughs> there we go see and just that little bit that's all i needed and these are blunt end needles on either end but that does hurt that you know trying to stick it through that fabric all right and then we're going to go up here on this end and try to find that hole there it is and hope that we get it lined up sometimes there it goes so sometimes when you do this with a thicker fabric it is uh it'll hit that fabric and kind of shoot the needle sideways and so i'm just going to keep this thread over here to the side and i'm going to come back in and i'm glad that this is a green thread and see how i'm going to the side of it because i've got this pulled tight i'm going to the side of that thread the best that i can to try to not poke it because if you poke that thread and you go to try to pull on it and tighten it up in a minute when you go to to uh why are you being so difficult to get back through that hole okay oh yes there we go see so you want to go beside of your thread and not poke your thread because if you pierce that thread, it's not going to tighten back up with you. It won't tighten up when you go to tie your knots. So see, so let so when I pull it like this, yep. Yeah. So that lets me know that I did not poke the thread. All right, there's the hole there, and look, that one went easy. <laughs> Ain't that a mess? Sometimes it's like that, though. Sometimes it's, it's hard, and so I think that's going to be pretty on the outside. That green, I think that would be pretty. All right, so then I'm probably going to loosen it up a little bit to even up my dangle pieces. Just so the ends of my string are a little more matchy. So be good. And see, like you can loosen it up and pull it back and forth. And if you had poked that string at any point during your sewing, you wouldn't be able to do that. All right. So I'll keep your uh, your yarn on this side, and you're gonna take your top piece while it's still threaded and go up underneath that. Uh oh, I got it hung around a page over here. <laughs> And you're going to pull that through. And then you can take your needle off. So then, see how, like, your thread is on opposite sides? So then you can take and you can tighten it up. 
And then I'll tighten that spine up on the outside. So we want to tighten it up and then I'll pull that top on the outside. And I'm going to go ahead and tie my knots in it. And I'll leave my, uh, and I pull it, the first knot, I'll pull it real tight. And then I'll check to make sure that they're not loose. And then I'll tie a couple more. I usually like to do three knots and then a bow. Just to, for good measure. Because this wax thread is really, really wax. And it'll, it'll allow us to come unknotted if you don't do at least three. Oh, I can't get in there to tie my bow. And I got it up to me, but I'm just tying a bow here in the middle right now till we get our decorative bits done. Yep. So I think that's going to be pretty, and I'll leave it in a bow on the inside. So we'll open up, buddy. And so then that way, like I said, whoever I give it to or whoever I sell it to or whatever can, uh, if they want to put charms and dangles from the middle of it, they can. But yeah, see that little piece right there, it tore. And I'm probably going to put me a piece of washi tape over that. Just wrap it around. Just so that. Good and tight here. They are. I'm gonna wind up pulling them too tight and uh, break my break my page. Yep. So now our our journal is sewn together, and we can commence to putting pieces in it. that that stays up in there but yeah uh, like I said you know you don't have to go get these bits and pieces or whatever but if you were to choose to that whole uh, set of uh, these here I just got them from the Dollar Tree it was the big clips at the Dollar Tree that's all I got this whole set of a uh, little all in uh, the needles and such I think it was like seven or eight bucks on Amazon. It come with the, the little thumb, the little thimble thing. And then uh, on this little pack of uh, needles, I got it separate. It was like four or five bucks. It's just different sizes because I knew I was going to be sewing through burlap and stuff like that. And I would need it a bigger eye needle. But yeah. And then this little kit here came with that... Uh, we are memories keeper thing so and it has its own little pokey tool as well so if you get that it's like uh 18 dollars i believe 18 19 dollars at the time when i got it it may got, may have gone up since then but i just look for uh book binding tools book binding kits that's what i searched for on amazon and the little tray I got it in and got from the Pop Shelf. You can get these at the Dollar General. Uh, Pop Shelf had them for like three bucks. Dollar General's got them for eight. Is that not nuts? So I'm, I'm upset that the that the Pop Shelf in our city closed because I love these little storage boxes like this, the bigger ones. I love them things because they fit perfect and they stack on each other. But yeah, this yarn kit, I'm pretty sure it. I know it was under 30 bucks, but I'm pretty sure it was around 25, maybe 26 ish dollars. And it may have gone up since then. But I love that thing because any color that you would could and would possibly want. I mean, see how that green is with that? I think that looks so pretty with, with this cover. And then just the green on the the green bow in the middle, I think goes so well. And I think that would just be pretty just left in the bow. You could just snip the ends a little bit and tie your little, a little neater bow, you know. But 
yeah, I like that a lot. All right, so let's see. We got, what, uh, 50, 50 minutes right out. Let's just pull out our, uh, and I'll, you know, wiggle with it a little bit here and get it. Because, you know, you just have sewed it, that sewed it in there. It's going to be a little stiff, and I'll wiggle it and play around with it a little bit. And I think for the closure, I don't know if I want to, I may put lace over this, but I didn't want to cover that up. But I'm probably going to put lace over it just so we can put us a, a, a closure piece. It's going to be about a two-inch piece of lace and just do it right there. And that'll be after we fill up the inside. All right. And, you know, this is two office envelopes, a thicker uh, piece of fabric, and a, a real, real kind of thin fabric. Yep. So, let's get, let's get our journal bits. These are all of our pockets and tucks. All right, so we know for sure these are going in there because that is, you know, our actual, uh, our actual journal cover pieces. And these here. Now this is how I de delegate this stuff out. So in, instead of doing placement at the moment, we'll just do, all right, so I have all my book page pieces here. And then I have printed papers. And this is a, a kit. And we have, you know, our guest check things. And this is scrapbook paper. And we'll just do that like that. We'll have the scrapbook paper that's printed stuff. This is, you know, and here's music paper. All right, so this here, we'll do one in the front, one in the back. One in the front, one in the back, and that's how I do it. One in the front, one in the back. All right, so this one here is different, so I'm going to keep that out because I think that would go with my blue journal better. So I'm going to lay that here, so then we got a stack going for it. All right, one in the front, one in the back, and then since that's got that piece on it, I'm going to put that one in the back, put that one in the front, front and back. And this is how I delegate them out. I don't even, you know, and this is what I do. Now, this may change according to where that orange paper is. And I think it was in the front piece. Well, which it'll wrap around to the back either ways. It don't matter. It don't really matter. We'll figure it out when we get there. All right. So, these two here are kind of similar. So, I'll put them. These two bits here are kind of similar. So, we'll do that. And this here is a uh, similar, so we'll find where the blue page is and the yellow page is, and we'll fix that front and back. And then, like I said, this piece here, if I need to, I can pull this, and we'll have pockets. There you go. And that's what we'll do. All right, so this will be the front, this will be the back. And let's see the white pages I needed. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we had 10 white pages front and back. And so that's 20 all together. That's why I come up with my count of how many and what I needed to make. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so we have 12. We only need 10. So now what I'm going to do, this piece for sure is going with this journal because it is the cover piece. That would go with the blue journal. That would go with the blue journal. So we'll put that to the side. And that's, that's how I do it. So you have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. That's ten for the front. Let's go through here. That's the blue journal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can put that one in there because it's a little more greeny than it is blue. Ten. That's how we're going to do it. So these are more blue background. So we'll put them in the blue journal. And we'll just put them up in our little bag of ephemera bits for uh, our next wildflower journal build. And that's how I do it. <laughs> I mean, there's really, and like This is how I did the other one and y'all all seen how well it worked out just you know make bits and pieces that go with the papers and with the kit or whatever i'm gonna wind up hitting that so let me lay that down so i don't hit the camera thing and this is my uh i've done tidied up my bits and everything that i deemed would go with uh the blue journal and i kept me some little little ephemera pieces and all that so i was just going to put it in a bag fabric for my next one because I got I can make another one and that's why I said these pieces here would be great to do a fall wildflower and I'm probably going to do that with these richer tones oh that's going to be pretty because all of that would match the richer tones in it so then we would do a, a, a fall theme wildflower journal and I got some more of these bits and I have all of this jewel tone colored stuff here so these here are kind of a blue but it's more green on them so i was like you know that would go with this journal that like they have more green bits with the you know so i was like i'm probably gonna need more tags and then when i cut these down and decorate them up if i don't need all of these what goes better in the blue journal will be pulled out and put in this and put in this ziploc bag in my wildflower journal kit box and uh We'll uh, put them up and save them for that. All right, so I have, where is, oh, there it is. I need that piece on the front. So I was trying to, you know, where it would be separated out a little bit. So then like where all of these pieces here are together, instead of having like one on this page and one on the page in front of it, I'm, I'll, when I get to putting them in there, I'll go through and be like, you know this piece this piece just kind of separate them up a little bit so they're not all together in the journal and i'm just putting sized wise pieces now so then we have back side and front side which i may switch it around because this is the outside cover and I want that on the front, and this, and that's the only reason and rhyme I'm doing it, cause this is the outside cover, this is the inside cover, so that would be the front and the back. I'm gonna put them back in my uh, in my box that holds my femur pieces for my pockets and tucks and belly band type situations. And I've got bukus of uh, of femur pieces and. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Ephemera pieces and journal cards. So this here will be a journal card. These are going to go in the middle section. I know that much. So what I'm talking about here in the middle. So I want these to be in here. Like one on one side and one on the other side. That's what I'm talking about there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those in, in there like that. And that'll be journal cards in there. All right. So this is a little pocket piece. These are all white ephemera pieces. And the ones that had non-dictionary uh, stuff on the back was just a, a big black page of a plant separated out like that 
and it's just you know purely by size front back and these are just the femur little femur pieces and that's all that is no rhyme or reason with them either just front and back until I run out and I'll need a little bit more uh, tag places because se several of them are going to be, you know, tuck spots in that. And I did a little fancy punch corner on these. So we'll see. Front, back. Front. Oh, get them apart. And I backed these already. I just printed on them back. Front, back. That can actually be saved for something else. So if we don't need them, the rose bits will be pulled out to go in the rose journals. That's what I was thinking. So, and that's a rose piece. So anything that has roses on it for the journal card bits will be pulled out and put up with something else. So then we have the smaller journal card pieces and all of these are printed on. It's a daffodil, and that's just a white daffodil, so I may save them. Like I said, you know, we'll go through and we'll put what we need, and this could be used in a bee journal, because it's got a bee on it. I mean, just stuff like that. This could be saved for a poppy journal, or for my Paris journal, so, you know. Like I said, there are things that if we do not need all of it in this, that we can pull out certain bits that could go in the purple journal or the butterfly that we can just pull them out and uh, put them in other stuff if we do not need all of these tucky tucky cards and tags uh, probably overdid the journal card bit but I knew a lot of them were small so that's front and back journal cards and I'm not going to count them down until we actually get placement done of everything I like to wait until we get the placement done of all of that because like you know you want to fill the pockets up I know for sure we needed 10 pockets on the front 10 pockets on the back so then we have tags and then wherever this that piece went is where we'll put this so we'll just set, split that out later and then like these little three here would go in a set and one of those multi-pocket things. And I made a I made a piece out of that ephemera. Just put some uh, my own coffee dyed uh, paper on the back of it that I tried my hand at. And just fix that up. Alright, so we have front, back. And then this one here, wherever this thing lies that matches this, we'll swap them. Does that make sense? And then there's where I made that uh, tag with the music paper. I backed it and then put that sticker on it from the Dollar Tree. Put a little pull on it. And this is the book page that we folded up. And then here's the little green tags. And I just put a little pull on them. Whoops. We'll separate that out and I had a bunch of uh, and then we did these so I think wherever this one here goes I'm gonna put that with it because that would go in the same like that would go in the back of the pocket and this would go in the same pocket does that make sense and we'll do the same with that all right so some of these all right, there's a book page for the front and the back. And these pulls I had already had in my stash. And I just pulled out what I thought would go with this particular uh, set of papers. No rhyme or reason. Just pulled them out and fixed them. What I thought would go with it. So, that's what I did there. So I think I'm going to put this in here as one set and then this will be equal to that. Does that make sense? So, and, and like if it's a one of those multi-pocket 
situations, then this will go in it, and this will go in a single or a multi pocket. And then I have three of these pieces. So we can actually do that right there. And then this piece is just, I don't have another one. So we'll just put it, stick it wherever we need it to go. How about that? <laughs> and I don't like to pare down tags either until, you know, we get our pockets placed and we go through and see what we need to go in them. So I make a, you know, if I have 20 pockets, uh, there's at least 20 tags going to be made at least excuse me, at least 12 tags and 12 journal cards to fill up those uh, pockets. And then multiple pocket, I know I had to have three, four, four places where there's multiple pocket full page. So you have two pockets at least and then a tuck behind or something like that. So that's gonna be four tags or four a mixture of tags and journal cards, four or five pieces. So whatever amount of pocket tuck spot situations I have, I always double tags and journal cards. That's why I always have extra journal cards and extra tags. Well, last journal I had extra pockets. So, and I still got these tags that I need to cut and fix because I know I'm gonna need extra. And it's going to be full in a fat gatored mouth journal when I get done. And I don't care. I think it's going to be beautiful. And we'll put us a one inch piece of lace here. I probably need to do that before I start filling it up. Because once it gets filled up in gatored mouth, it's going to be hard to put that lace on there. So what I'll do is I'll take these pieces back out. And I'm just going to lay them right here on top of my journal cards. And I'll flip it open like this. And then just so I can, you know, put my uh, piece of lace that I want to tie it up with, I'm going to use a, a green lace probably. Uh, and I'll cut these and uh, probably do that on my next video. I'll do the uh, cut these and decorate them after I get my uh, my lace put on here and my, my pull done. My closure, I mean, I'm sorry. So I think I'm just going to do just a, I got a real pretty... Uh, mint green bluish uh, lace that I think would be pretty in that and that's looking loose to me why are you looking loose buddy oh I see that fixed I'm gonna, that's gonna be my next video so i'm gonna get off here thank you all for watching and i'm sorry i've kept y'all long a couple days but this is just a the train of thought and why i do what i do and how it comes about and so people's been asking about the the picking out process you know how i work things and some journals i do you know like i'll go to a page and this specific pocket i want this specific journal card or this particular tag you know i i do do journals like that yes but most of the time like uh like these where i have you know the white pages and i'll do with the papers you know i'll just split it up front and back because it all kind of goes together it all matches you know it's, it's all yeah so but yep that's how it happens <laughs> All right, let me get off here, get this video up for you, and then I'll make one for tomorrow, which will probably be, what, Tuesday. All right, thank you all. Enjoy yourself, enjoy your family, enjoy your crafting. We'll talk at you later.